I'd now like to introduce our next speakers. John Williams, Head of UK Network at Changing Faces, and Margaret Dunn, Margaret Dunn, Skin Camouflage Practitioner from Changing Faces. He's going to have a talk about skin, the Skin Camouflage Service and also a demonstration, I believe. So, John and Margaret, over to you. Hello, I'm um, the last show, but uh, I'm going to do a very swift uh, kind of overview about what Change in Faces does, and then Margaret's going to do the demonstration, which is uh, yeah, very useful. Um, right, um, Change in Faces is an organisation that's uh, here to kind of uh, work a better world for people with disfigurements. It's, there's a, a huge amount of discrimination against people with disfigurements. And we were from any calls, and we really wanted to make sure the changes. We were set up in 1992 by a man called James Partridge, who at the age of 18 had a serious accident. He was driving in North Wales with some friends. Uh, he flipped the car, unfortunately. It seemed everything fine, everybody got out. But unfortunately, caught fire. The result was he had, uh, I think, 30% burns, severe burns. He then went through five years of surgery, and they tried to reconstruct his face. Trying to just kind of yeah, stabilise him. Um, he then said stop because he didn't want any more and he just got on with his life. And he went to have a family, he got on with things. And then he ended up writing a book about 20 years ago about his experience and how he got through that process and how he had a family and how he got on with his life. And that resulted in our charity because that's, how, that's where it came from. Uh, we now have about 40 staff working on various issues around the country. I and mean, we recently took on from the Red Cross the skin camouflage service, which Margaret's going to say a bit more about. But it's a fantastic service all over the country, not everywhere I would say, but certainly for a lot of places. And it's kind of a very effective uh, short term intervention that allows people to self manage uh, their skin conditions. And Margaret will say a bit more about that uh, in a minute. Um, we have two major themes in the organisation there's change in lives, which is where we work with individuals and families to help them, support them, and help them get on with their lives. We also have changing minds, which is about changing the attitude of the world, essentially, sort of thing. So we're quite an ambitious organisation, quite small, but we've got great ambitions. There's a huge range of conditions that people have, and these are some of them. Um, and they're a hand pigment organisation, so we don't work with just particular conditions, we work across, across the area. Um, just a word on the word about disfigurement. We don't actually like the word disfigurement. We can find another word other than disfigurement. There's a lot of people don't like it. For example, you've got a birthmark. You don't feel you're disfigured. You have a birthmark. Um, and a lot, a lot of people feel it's, just, it's, a, it's a negative word, like any word that's going to be So if anybody can think of a word other than disfigurement, we'd be really interested to hear from you. So we've been struggling with that one for many years. Right. In terms of, kind of a few facts and figures, um, about 1.3 million people have a, a significant disfigurement. Um, that's one in 45. Um, and about half a million of those people have a significant facial disfigurement. And uh, that's, is that, they, that is, yeah, we call changing faces, but we do the face and body issues. Because even though you can't, you can't actually see some of these um, it's still having an impact on their lives and how they actually behave in the world. Um, in terms of, kind of the conditions that you have, there's a uh, about 92,000 people have uh, congenital birth conditions. Uh, 6,000 have uh, disfigurements through kind of accidents, through burns and scar, facial scars. About 40,000 people have uh, cancer-related disfigurements. Uh, 100,000 people have a facial paralysis. And about 220,000 people have skin conditions like psoriasis, vitiligo, and acne, and things like that. So it's kind of it's quite wide range in the areas that we deal with, but also other people deal with. Now, if you're living with um, disfigurements, uh, common, common issues. There's low self-esteem, so essentially if you, have, you, you feel, the way people feel about you is um, quite, quite difficult for you to deal with. We live in a very good looks culture. It's very strong imagery you have nowadays, particularly you've got to continuously kind of force at you, essentially, that you've got to look good. So it's kind of constantly going on. So if you've got any information that we don't feel you look good, there's a real kind of pressure on you, so you can expect your self-esteem. It's also interpersonal, so your self-confidence is also affected very much because you've got to, essentially you've got to, you're seen as negative, you get stared at. A lot, when, most people when they walk down the street have what they call civic attention. People just ignore you, you just walk down the street. 
you have something that makes you particularly different in any way, people will stare at you. So we're all going to sleep with my two presented James, Dr. Burns. People just stare at him, so you have to deal with that. And he, he, he went to see uh, Phantom of the Opera uh, last year, and somebody said after the show, they go, oh, there's the Phantom talking because of the way he looks. So it's going to be, so he's, he's not allowed to walk down the streets. He's people keep looking at him and staring at him and making comments about him. He's thinking negatively at him. Okay, and there's also medical issues. There's always the feeling that there could be a medical fix for people with these things. There must be a way of sorting it out. I don't know if any of you remember a film called Face Off. It's a film where two actors can swap their faces. <coughs> and like I said, they go into the machine and their faces swap. And it's straightforward. It's not straightforward because the medical fixes are not that simple. And it will probably never be that simple. Because they're very complicated to do. And you know, you've heard you in the news the moment lots about face transplants. Well, the drugs you have to take to have a face transplant actually shorten your life by 10 years. So it's going to be it's a very difficult complicated thing that uh, the medics are still trying to figure out. But it's going to take a long time to sort it out. So it's really a two-sided issue in the kind of two-sided attack. We have a package, and it's a, essentially a CPT package, package. It's been interesting to hear people talk about that earlier, about her, what, how how effective that's been. And essentially it's kind of it's got relation to faces sort of thing. So it's about how you're finding out about how you what, what the condition is. Get an attitude, a positive attitude about how you deal with it as well. It's a lot of them quite into feelings when it comes to us. Learning how to cope with those feelings. So then we have we help the people develop strategies to cope. Uh, change experiences with others. I think and groups like Lupus and other groups are really important, I think, for people who have that common experience, which you can understand how other people have dealt with it, and it gives you strength and know you can move on, even if it is quite challenging. Um, and it's also kind of social skills, helping people have their social skills to come kind of get on with their lives. And I thought it was really what people say is really interesting about the way pain management can be dealt with. But that's really about getting on with your life and trying to a very effective way. We deliver it through two ways of faces, uh, change of faces practitioners, um, and they have, we also train health professionals in the, in the health service as well. So we want to kind of mainstream the sort of work we're doing. Uh, we also have a self-help format as well, so if you go to our website, you can find various booklets, uh, and these are kind of the range of booklets that we deal with, so we kind of, it's about uh, communicating with confidence and kind of intimacy, love and relationships, so again, giving people opportunities to kind of self-help themselves. Now, as like I said, we have a thing called change of mind as well, um, and again, it's sort of this, the need to throw huge amounts of imagery at you sort of thing, so you have the books from the, uh, well, the Lord of the Rings films, you read the books, there's no indication the orcs look any different from anybody else. And in the film, they just start making kind of this sort of imagery. Which they, they, so therefore they're bad and evil because they're disfigured. And again, so this is what sort of thing people kind of have, the fact that the opera which I mentioned a little bit earlier. Well, these have very strong imagery of kind of, you know, what beauty is as well. And that's kind of cause of this as well. So it's kind of, you know, we're told this is the way we should be appearing. So we have, we, we are aware that it's kind of this kind of unconscious prejudice against people with disfigurements. Our own research indicates that 9 out of 10 people have negative feelings about people who look disfigured in some way or are visibly different. That's kind of, it's an unwitting discrimination in the sense that people don't do it intentionally, but it's this way people react just by seeing it. It's this, this is a scary thing sometimes with people, it's something you have to acknowledge. So it's kind of, the, the assumption is that, you know, if you've got, if you look different or you've got, if your appearance is not beautiful, you're going to be in some ways sad and second rate. You're going to have a second rate life. There's the pressures of the odd. Because you look odd, you must be just so less than, better than anybody else sort of thing. There's the pressures of the medical, as of the medical and surgical fix, thinking that everybody can be fixed easily by doctors. They can't. So, I mean, again, you go back to what people say about pain, it's something that, that isn't necessarily always fixable. So it's, so it's basically it's, it's unwitting. So essentially, um, I'm kind of conscious of time, so I'm going to start speeding up. Uh, we have a face quality campaign where we're trying to change things, not only around the health, but also around the education and employment as well. So we want to make sure that you know, people who have a little difference at school don't get bullied because you do, that does happen. Uh, and also, employment, we're aware, we just launched a campaign recently about what success looks like, and that's about how people with disabilities can be successful at work as well. So again, we believe there's evidence to show that you know, if you look different or you don't look attractive, you will have a more difficult work life. Not always so. 
because there's some great examples where that hasn't happened, but certainly it does happen in a lot of cases. Right, so we, we've run various poster campaigns. Some of you may have seen these posters around uh, well, the country, but probably in London, because uh, we've got them on the tube a lot. But it's kind of trying to draw people to the fact that the, the children are there are kind of trying to show how positive they be despite of what's happened to them. And again, these posters kind of tell you about how people react to people. Um, Pal, the man in the corner here, that's quite a small kind of cleft lip, but for him it's a big issue. And, it's, and again, it's, it's not about it's, it's, the size or significance of the disfigurement, it's about the impact it has on the person and how they feel about it. So you have uh, Adam here, who's recently been in a film uh, uh, with, uh, I've got a name, um, yes, yeah, so keep in mind. But he's a very confident man, he's been on telly in some programs already, sort of thing, and he's very kind of at ease with himself. It's quite like a neurofibrosis, which kind of is, is what the elephant man had as well, sort of thing. he's very confident about that. James here, this is James Potter's our chief executive. A few years ago he was on uh, what's Channel 5 News for about a week. And that's trying to challenge the kind of the good looks culture that we had. So I think so that Channel 5 worked with us uh, in, in Sky News as well to actually make sure that was, for a week we just had this had James doing the news. And it kind of had a lot of interest because it made people challenge the way we, we don't have to always be attracted to do things like the news. Right, fine, fire side. So we're very much a campaigning organisation. Um, with have uh, Lilia, Lilia, a film with that film, it's uh, Michelle Doherty, who's from Downton Abbey. She's done a kind of an advert about kind of, uh, how to kind of mistake people with the sequence as a, as a bad or a evil. Um, with Trip Side of the Lone Ranger film, we've got some changes around that because again, they're associating you know, kind of the stigma with uh, bad, bad characters. We have uh, been challenging public ridicule, so you know, as you were aware, probably very aware of Jeremy Clarkson, there's a habit of kind of attacking people who are somebody different or would not, not like Jeremy Clarkson. Um, we, we got an apology out of the BBC, which was kind of put a few months ago, and we, we still the piece doing things, as you can see recently. Um, and we've also been complaining about washing monsters with these kind of sweet little uh, things, small things that like, the small children tend to like, because they have a Glum's family. Uh, the Gums family are uh, all forms of disfigurement and they do naughty things, they're bad. And they're, so we've been trying to tell um, Roger Montes, can we please have them not always been doing bad things? We do that. And it's been quite a short time to convince them to do that. Anyway, that's enough from me. I'm going to pass on to Margaret, who's going to talk about screen camera Um, we are going to have done the video while I'm uh, working so that you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Um, but just before uh, Juliet comes up, I just wanted to say a little bit about um, skin camouflage um, because obviously I won't be able to hold the microphone while I'm working. Um, the service of skin camouflage has been in operation for well over 30 years now. As John said, we were with the um, Red Cross and um, in the last about four years we've moved over to Changing Faces and the lovely thing about that is that Changing Faces also give the psychological support to people if they need that but apart from that um, the work that we do is exactly the same we are all volunteers that provide the service uh, Pete said that I've looked a bit like a nurse um, I ha don't come from a nursing background um, some of our volunteers will, but not all of them. But as long as we've got an interest in people, um, a certain amount of um, expertise when it comes to uh, colours, and obviously being happy um, in a one-to-one -one situation with other people, because that uh, is where we work. And so obviously when you see um, what we're going to do this afternoon, it's going to be quite different um, in a way from what we would uh, normally do. We deal with a load of um, skin problems, um, obviously because we're only working uh, with specially formulated creams, we can't get rid of lumps and bumps. Um, we are, I have to say, often at the end of the line for people. They might have been to uh, consultants, to dermatologists who say, well, we can't do anything else for you, 
go and see the skin camouflage lady. Um, we never send anyone out not being able to do anything for them. What we can hopefully do at um, the very least is lessen the impact of whatever they're suffering from, um, and particularly if it's a case of colour. Um, and even if it is, say, um, you know, a bright red lump, if you're making it the same colour as the rest of their face, it's going to be less noticeable. So lots of the skin problems that come um, along to us will be rosacea, which is a redness of the flushing of the face, um, telangiectosis, which is a little bit like getting um, red vein marks, vitiligo, um, loss of skin pigmentation, acne, lupus, of course, and particularly um, when you get the red butterfly shapes um, on your head, um, on your face, um, we can help with that. Pariasis, port wine stains, which people have from birth, the interesting thing about those, if it covers 10% of a baby's body, it will still cover 10% of their body when they're an adult. Uh, keratosis, keloid scars, um, when you've had an operation, you know, often get a white scar, which can be raised. Um, melasma, cloasma, and of course burns, scars, tattoos, and quite often a prosthesis, if someone's got that. Um, on their face, we can colour match that um, to the rest of their skin. And John's talked about some of the problems that people get um, low with uh, disfigurement, low self-esteem, self-consciousness, um, anxiety, depression, social isolation, and difficulty in making friends and close relationships, and poor communication skills, often under achievement. I think one of the sad things is that someone will come and see us with a problem and they'll say, well, I can cope with the problem. What I can't cope with is people saying, who hit you? Or what did you walk into? Or how did you do that? And often they just want it covered really for that as much as anything else. And that's quite a sad um, reflection on people. So what we're using is specially formulated creams and powders which are permanent when they're applied properly and waterproof. And the main advantage of that, of course, is that we're not putting anything into your body in the way of medicines um, or anything that's going to have any side effects. We help anyone, male, female, any age, any ethnic background. We don't see children under five now. And obviously, if it's a young teenager, we'd expect someone um, to come with them. We work in various places. It might be in hospital dermatology department, <coughs> um, in a doctor's surgery, <coughs> local authority um, clinics. And I think there's, um, well, over the country, we've got well over 200 of us now, haven't we? Um, because changing faces, fortunately, are growing the service. Um, once the client's been referred to us, and that can be with a letter from um, the consultant or it might be a self-referral form going up to Changing Faces, um, we'll give them a, an appointment and I usually have my appointments for an hour. Um, we've got to get used, we've got to make the client feel at home, um, we've got to treat them with respect and I usually start off, even if I can see what's wrong, you'll ask them why they've come to see us because there might be a multitude um, of reasons as I've, I've mentioned. And then we'll start um, talking about the creams and if they know, some of them don't even know why they've been sent, you know. Uh, I say, what are you perhaps expecting? Oh, well, the doctor told me to make an appointment to see you. And they don't even know what um, we're going to do. So some people might come um, with an expectation that they are going to go out looking absolutely perfect. Um, we try, but you know, we're, we're not um, miracle workers, but we will try our best um, to help them. And then we'll do the colour matching, and um, I'm sure in a moment you can 
you're, and you're welcome to come up afterwards, you can see all the creams that we've got here, about four different makes. I'll probably chat about these um, while I'm working. Um, when we've showed them how to uh, apply the cream, when we've chosen a colour that they're happy with, um, as well as one that I think is good, because if I say, well, look, that's the right colour for you and they don't like it, they're not going to use it. So, um, you know, we'll work that out uh, between us. Um, we'll show them how to apply it, how to powder it to make it waterproof, and probably let them have a go themselves. And then all the um, creams and powders that we use are available on prescription. So they're then given um, a prescription form to take to the GP, who will give them a prescription uh, to go to the chemist. Um, I would know, we would normally only see people once, unless they perhaps come in the summer um, and say, well, I'm paler in the winter. I've no idea how pale they're going to go. Or if they come in the winter and say, well, I go brown in the summer. Well, how many shades of brown are there? So in, in instances like that, we probably see them um, another time. So basically, um, that's uh, what we do. We are a service that is free at the point of contact, but obviously we do rely um, on donations uh, for our work, but we would never turn anyone away if they couldn't afford um, a donation. And we'll give them a donation envelope, but it's never a case of when you don't go out of the door till you've given me something. Um, so, you know, it is available to um, everyone. So that's all I'm going to say before I start, um, because I've got all the contents of my bag up here, which I will be using most of them um, as we go around. So, Juliet, if you'd like to um, come up now. Now, I know um, we did have a bit of a job to find um, someone who we could work on. Now, it might seem daft. I know there are some people here with vitiligo. Isn't too bad today. Now, obviously, for the purposes of a demonstration, it's quite a good idea to have something that you're going to notice the difference um, afterwards. And um, Julia's got quite a um, pale scar in there, so hopefully, at the end of the day, uh, you won't be able to see that. If anyone else wants to come up and see us afterwards, um, you know, and have a look at, we'll do that. But I mean, sometimes I might go through about half a dozen creams to get to the right colour. And um, we haven't got, we're going to put the lights on here, but it's not like working in my clinic uh, with natural light. And obviously we've got to make this fairly interesting um, for the rest of you to see what's happening. So um, we'll start and I'll matter as I go on. I won't try to quite be treating you like an ordinary client because I'll be talking um, to everyone else. Normally, I would work, um, my clients would be on a very comfortable chair, I'd be on another chair, um, but I think because of um, the way we're going to work today, the fact that they're building it, it's going to be um, easier to do it like this, so I'm going to work quite as comfortable as I would like it to be. Um, check their clothing is the first thing. Um, I have just wiped my hands um, with some uh, cream because I can't be able to see. I wash my hands um, before I start. So, Julia, how long have you had your scarring on your arms? Seven eight years. And um, do you find that people does it cause you a problem? Sometimes, yeah. Right. So yes. So, um, did you know about the Sea Camouflage Service before today? Right, well, I've told everyone about it today, so <laughs> why would you uh, describe that to um, the patient to tell them? So, the first thing we're going to do is try a few colours to see what's going to match um, your skin. When we've found a colour uh, that is going to match very well, then we'll um, try it on and um, we'll put it on and see what you think.
sometimes you can actually um, go to one colour and say, I think that will work. And it does, and you say, it did. Um, other times it might not. So I'm copying my dark colours here. We've got um, two or three ways we can put our creams on. Either with damp sponges um, or with brushes. <coughs> just, um, choose the colour to start with. I'm going to. Um, what do you think about that? Um, which is um, wrung out of water. 